I want to start this video very seriously. On the 3rd of June this year, I made a video discussing whether Onward might break the Pixar theory, and a lot of you in the comments pointed out that this was a blatant copy of the Super Carlin Brothers video with the same title, released a day later on the 4th of June. I want to sincerely apologise for this, plagiarism is a very serious issue and I as a creator should have more honour than to word for word replicate another creator's video. And while I know you don't want to hear my excuses like I hadn't seen the video because it hadn't come out yet, or that the videos are actually very different when you look at the contents, because you're right to be mad at me, and I've spoken to Jonathan Carlin about it in the DMs, and he is also beyond furious. So this time round, I wanted to make sure I waited at least 10 days after the trailer came out to make sure I don't accidentally copy anyone who comes along after me. Which has given me a lot of time just to sit on and think about the trailer, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it's a little bit uncomfortable, because alongside getting more comparisons to Weekend at Bernie's than I ever thought a Pixar film would get, there's a lot of people saying it just doesn't feel like a Pixar film. And you know what? I kinda get it. Well yes, Pixar are literally the only film studio in the world that could make me feel emotional from watching Feet. This does have some weird non-Pixar vibe to it somehow, I just, I can't put it into words. Which only naturally got me thinking, what makes a Pixar film feel like a Pixar film? What stylistic feature could possibly connect films like Toy Story, which takes place in pretty much the human world as we know it, to monster societies, robot apocalypses, and sentient cars? You know, other than the Pixar theory, we're not talking about that today, okay? Well, the obvious thought is, surely it's got to be the animation style. You can tell a film's Pixar from the way the characters are designed, right? And well, yes, to be fair, there are notable differences in the way they animate their characters compared to studios like Illumination, where humans all have ridiculous skinny legs that I refuse to believe is able to support their body weight. Being an intentional cartoonish style, different to Pixar's pretty much lifelike humans just with larger and rounder heads. And that's really nicely illustrated here by these two images of Colette from Ratatouille. And just to prove it isn't a one-off, here's two images of Merida showing she has a larger and rounder head compared to an actual human. I'll leave a link to the artist, the nameless doll on Tumblr in the description because these really help me visualize it. But the thing is, this lifelike style isn't only done by them. Disney animation animate humans in pretty much the exact same way. Just look at all the princesses from Ralph Breaks the Internet who are joined by Merida, a Pixar character. Is there anything that makes her stand out other than the fact she's Scottish? No. And this isn't overly surprising. Disney animation and Pixar animation are owned by the same parent company. Disney. But then again, it's not just Disney. Most of the characters from DreamWorks, like, I don't know, Hiccup and Astrid, are also pretty humanly shaped. Like, what's so special about Pixar's character animation that makes it stand out compared to Disney's or DreamWorks? And to be honest, the answer's not much, really. At the end of the day, I just think there's too much overlap in terms of people having worked for more than one of these studios and the softwares they use for there to be this completely distinct and unreproducible style. And you know what? I don't even think the animation of Onward is un-Pixar-y. Everyone and their mother is comparing the character design of Ian Lightfoot to Linguini from Ratatouille, which is notably a Pixar film. And I don't think people watch it and say, Well that isn't very Pixar-y. It's a classic, except for that one really weirdly out of place character right at the end. I don't know what happened with her character design, but she's there. And also, I don't know about you, but I got some major Monster Zinc vibes from some of the characters in the trailer, so I just don't think this not feeling like Pixar has anything to do with the animation. Meaning, by process of elimination, it has to do with the story. Right? So what's different about this story? It's taking place in a non-human world, I guess, which I'm willing to admit might be it, but I'm not 100% sure because it's not as if none of their other films have taken place in a non-human world. Monsters, Inc. is set in Monstropolis. Cars takes place on this weird car planet, which totals up to five other films, so there's something about this that feels never ever done before, but with these two series, there's at least a foot in the human world. With Monsters, Inc. having a literal human world they travel to and spend time on in both films, and cars actually existing in the human world, just there are no humans because they're cars. It doesn't really make sense. There's also magic playing a prevalent part in this film, which is usually more of a Disney thing, but not an entirely new concept when it comes to Pixar, because Brave has magic in it, and so does Coco. Like, it's never actually outright said, but I mean, there's pretty clearly magic in this film. There's literally a cursed guitar. Bring me to the final and pretty much the only other thing I could think of, being that this film has a decapitated character in it. Which, I mean, that's pretty unique. And somehow already been done. 
multiple times. I don't get it. What is up with this film? Why does it feel weird? At this moment, you'd be right to assume I was stumped, but you might also notice by checking the video progress bar that this video isn't even nearly done, because for some reason, despite all of this analysis of animation styles and comparing this story to Pixar's others to see any glaring differences, it never occurred to me that I could just Google it. And that's when I discovered, or should I say, was reminded of something very interesting, being that Onward isn't actually the first Pixar film to be accused of not feeling like a Pixar film. There are articles claiming the exact same thing about Brave in 2012, followed by The Good Dinosaur in 2015. And honestly, yeah, I get it. If I was to pick out two films that don't really fit in with the rest, The Good Dinosaur and Brave would be right up there. You know, probably with cars, but the first Cars probably came out just early enough for Pixar not to quite have an identity to get accused of that. But, or maybe it did, I don't know, I was eight when that film came out. However, it also opens up a couple questions. So, do like Pixar fans have this sixth sense where they can work out whether a film's gonna be good or bad before it comes out? Because, I mean, if we're talking over the last 10 years, Pixar have made five originals and Brave and the Good Dinosaur are miles behind Coco Inside Out and Up. Like. Miles behind. Also, wait, so does this mean onward? No, 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 no. But I guess more importantly to this video at least, why were these films said to not feel pixar -y? And can we relate the points used against them to onward? For the record, I think we can. So let's talk about Brave. Which for me, it always felt like more of a Disney film because I mean, it's literally a Disney princess film, just made by Pixar, and honestly it keeps me up at night because the film Disney Animation made that year, Wreck-It Ralph, always felt like more of a Pixar film. You know, telling the story of what would happen if this totally ordinary thing had a world and civilization of its own. That's like the Pixar formula. Okay, don't tell anyone but conspiracy here. What if Disney and Pixar got the films mixed up, so got the logos the wrong way round, but then it was too late and just decided to roll with it? Because the world would make so much more sense if this was a Pixar film and this was a Disney film. Just, okay, 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 okay. That might be a little far-fetched. And most people have concluded the reason Brave feels like a Disney film was actually just because it was made by people who used to work for Disney. I mean, it's not my conspiracy, but... The director, Brenda Chapman, is also very well known for her work on films such as Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, with the screenwriters having similar backgrounds with Disney. People who used to work at Disney produce a Disney-esque film. Imagine my shock. But what I find more interesting is the lack of the main Pixar guys working on this film. You know, John Lasseter, Pete Docter, Andrew Stanton, and Brad Bird. For me, these are like the core four when it comes to Pixar, with the first 10 films all being directed by one of them. Making Brave in 2012 the first original film not to be directed by one of them. The Uncritch, who we'll get back to, was technically the fifth person to direct a Pixar film, but it was a sequel, and both John Lasseter and Andrew Stanton were screenwriters for it, so it was a very different situation, and quite frankly, I think it would have been difficult for Toy Story 3 not to have a Pixar feel to it. Singling Out Brave is the film where the guys who made Pixar what it is had the least involvement with to that date. Which obviously would have played a crucial part in making it feel less like a Pixar film, leading on to The Good Dinosaur, which if you take one look at the people who worked on it, clearly suffers from the exact same problem, resulting in it not feeling like a Pixar film either. And as you might have guessed, Onward, directed by Dan Scanlon, is also lacking any of the Pixar original team, or the core four, working on it, which I think provides a great explanation to why it doesn't feel like a Pixar film. But does that then mean it's destined to fail? Do we actually have this sixth sense where we know this film won't be up to the Pixar standard? I don't think so. You see, this whole thing of films having to feel like the Pixar of the past is most likely going to come up again and again and again as the original directors leave and move on into the future, leading to more new directors with different styles and approaches directing Pixar films. But this doesn't mean those films can't be good. That'd be ridiculous. And that's what brings us on to the first exception to the rule, Lee Uncritch and Coco, which similarly to the others spoken about was an original without a member of the core four playing a major part in its production, but was received as an overwhelming success. It's one of my favorite films of all time and most excitingly of all, I think Dan Scanlon is in a very similar position to where Lee Uncritch was going into Toy Story 3 going into Onward, where they directed a sequel or prequel first to kind of test out the water and then they get a go at making an original of their own. Which personally makes me so excited for Onward because, I mean, if it's half as good as Coco, I'll be delighted and, you know what, it could be better than Coco, who knows? 
Maybe you do, and let me know down in the comment section down below. That felt really weird, I'm never gonna do that again. If you enjoyed this video, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, and make sure to leave a like. You can go follow me on Twitter and Instagram, I do stuff on there as well, you can check that out. You can also subscribe to my channel on here and be alerted when I make other videos, and go check out another video right now, because there's gonna be one linked right here, and you can also go support me on Patreon, it would mean the world if you could support me on there. That's a lot of stuff to take in, I know, so channel, video, Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.